Hello and welcome to the OM Genomics Show. I'm Maria Nadestad. Today I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I define bioinformatics. So here's what I tell non-scientists that I do. I use computers to analyze biological data. So that usually helps them understand. But just to be sure what the definition of bioinformatics was, I went to the Almaty Wikipedia and to check that I wasn't crazy for this video. And it defines bioinformatics as an interdisciplinary field that develops methods and software tools for understanding biological data. So I think that's a pretty close definition to what I had. And people in bioinformatics also like to make a really big deal about that Venn diagram where biology meets computer science meets mathematics or statistics. And this actually looks a lot like the Venn diagram that the data scientists make where it's computer science meets statistics meets domain knowledge or domain expertise of some kind. And here, of course, domain knowledge and domain expertise is biology. So maybe if we want to impress our friends and improve our earning potential, then we should start calling ourselves data scientists or biological data scientists. But depending on what we do exactly, the title could also be bioinformatics software engineer or something completely different. It really depends a lot on what you do. So I've heard multiple people debate the difference between bioinformatics and computational biology, and they really don't agree between different people on what the difference between these two fields is. And I think a more useful distinction is these three major approaches to doing bioinformatics research, which are number one, data analysis. This could mean going from raw data to cleaning up the data and then to doing some statistical and visual interpretations of the results. But it's all focused on taking a data set from the raw data to some kind of an answer at the end. The second one is bioinformatics software development. This is developing software to do bioinformatics analyses. And these are big enough software products to publish as independent methods papers and to be used by other scientists in the community of the field that you're studying. The third one is modeling, and this is modeling simulations, generally making equations to represent biological systems. So these are three different categories that I've had some experience with for all of them. And in my experience, seeing the broader field and who's doing these different kinds of approaches to bioinformatics. I would say that data analysis is the most natural starting point for biologists. It's what I started with. And it involves the most domain expertise because it specifically involves interpreting data. The ability to detect oddities and interesting patterns in the data can also heavily depend on your knowledge of the biological system that the data comes from. And so it's really important to have that biological domain expertise in order to do the data analysis. So for the second one, bioinformatics software development, I've experienced this approach as something computer scientists naturally take on. They can also do data analysis, but most computer scientists uh, will have a hard time resisting building some kind of a real software product along the way. And the software that is developed can take many forms from command line tools to web applications also something that I've done. And maybe I'll talk about um, a little bit of what I have done in my own story and how I've moved through these fields. Um, the third one, modeling, I've seen as very fashionable with physicists and mathematicians. Get it? Modeling, fashionable. <laughs> um, you can tell their work apart by the fact that it's full of equations and sometimes written in LaTeX. So I'll give you an example of each of these three things based on my own experiences and things that I've worked on, because I do have a bit of experience in all of them. And so the first one, data analysis, as I was coming out of college, I had mostly wet lab experience and my first major project in my PhD and which became most of my thesis was this analysis of some packed biosequencing data in a breast cancer cell line called SKBR3. And what I did there was we started out with a lot of sequencing data. So I had to use some pipelines like aligners and variant callers in order to analyze that data. 
so you go through the pipelines and then you end up maybe making some plots and things like that at the end and so that was what we did now for the second one this goes very well we ended up needing to build our own bioinformatics tools because the ones that were made for next generation sequencing which we had been using for some of the steps were actually not sufficient for dealing with long read sequencing data and getting all the full information content out of that so we ended up building some of our own tools and I built some of those and my colleagues built some other ones that were more optimized in C and so on for making it super fast to run through a lot of data and that's really important. Uh, what I had done was some more of the interpretation, you know, coming from that biology standpoint from the beginning. I was doing some algorithms that would help us to interpret the data as well and kind of consolidate it and bring different data types together and also I built visualization tools and kind of analysis coupled with visualization tools. Split Threader is a really great example of that, where you do some work on the back end, you know, in Python or R, and then you take that and you show the results of that to the user in a nice visual interface. So that's an example of a web application that does that actually has command line tools on the back side, but then also shows you it in a visual interface. And for the third one, modeling, I haven't done this in my PhD so much, but in college I had an undergraduate research project with a math professor and another student where we were doing a network to represent the students on campus and we would see how the flu could spread around the network based on who knew who else in the network. So like the nodes or students, you'd use like probabilities for saying whether the flu is going to transition, be spread from one person to another in this network. And so kind of simulating that spread on the network and also predicting what would happen in terms of using probability distributions, but also doing simulations and seeing if they fit together. So that kind of encompasses, I think, nicely an example of what that modeling approach to bioinformatics is. Um, so now I want to hear from you. What have you done? Does it fit nicely into these three categories that I said? Or am I missing another category of bioinformatics research completely? If you want updates when I release more videos like this, which I do every week right now, um, definitely come over to omgenomics.com and subscribe for our weekly email series. And so I hope to see you over there and definitely check out the comments. I think there's going to be some nice discussion here this time. Thank you.